Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on engineering science and one uh, working on statics. We've got the question paper that we have, which is uh, August 2021 that we're going to refer uh, from. On question six, we are given the diagram in fig four represents two pulling forces acting on a body. By using the parallelogram of forces method, determine the resultant of the pulling forces. And we are given uh, a hint to use a scale of 10 Newton equivalent to one centimeter. Okay. So in this case, guys, I'm just going to show you a sketch of what it was supposed to look like. Then, uh, then for you, you, you must do this accurately. Okay. Uh, take note, we have got uh, two forces that we have, the 70 Newton and the 60 Newton. So we are going to take these forces uh, let's say this is where we have our, we can just have our north pole. So like I said, I'm going to do it as a sketch, but you're supposed to do this accurately. Okay. So what you're going to do is that you measure the, well, let's start with the 70 Newton here. So you're going to measure from the horizontal line. We are given that there's an angle of 60 degrees. Okay. So from the horizontal line back to this point, this is what 60 degrees. All right. So that means if we are to measure 70 Newton, which is represented by seven centimeters, why? Because we are given that 10 Newton represents one centimeter. So you divide 70 by 10, this is going to be seven centimeters, okay? So you are going to draw, uh, you measure from this point here, you measure 60 degrees, okay? So that's uh, that was 60 degrees, okay? That's somewhere like this. All right, so this line that you are going to have, or this force that you are going to have, it is taken at 60 degrees, all right? It is taken at 60 degrees. And also the other important part is that the force that we have here, we have taken it as seven centimeters. So according to your measurement on your ruler, this is seven centimeters, but it is representing what? 70 Newton. All right. So do not confuse this part. All right. Then from this part, we have another force which is taken at what? At 30 degrees. Okay. So, which is 60 Newton. So if you divide by 10, that is six centimeters. All right. So you measure 30 degrees, maybe 30 degrees. That's somewhere here, uh, somewhere like this. All right. Uh, somewhere at this point. So you measure six centimeters. So let's say this is where we have our 60 centimeters in this case, which is representing what? 60 Newton, all right? So from this angle, this is what? 30 degrees. So you measured 30 degrees from the east going to the, uh, to the south, all right? So what you know is that, guys, this is a, you are supposed to produce a parallelogram where you know that the length is supposed to be the same from a parallelogram concept. Remember that opposite sides are parallel and equal. Opposite sides are parallel and equal. So this, if this is six centimeters, you are going to measure six centimeters from this point because you know that from you are going to have another six centimeters in this case, which is 60 Newton. So you measure from this point, you measure six centimeters, you just mark an arc representing what? six centimeters, let's say uh, something like this. Uh, all right, let's just say just somewhere here. All right, so let's say this is our arc representing six centimeters. Okay, from this point, we are supposed to have seven centimeters for 70 Newton from this point, all right? So you are going to measure seven centimeters from this point, you mark at this point like this. So when these two intersect, that is the point of intersection of the forces we're going to have from this point to this point like this, then from this point uh, to this point like this, at the point of what? At the point of intersection of these two uh, arcs that we have. So it means this is 60, this is also 60. If this is 70, this is also 70. So as we are worried with the resultant, where are we going to have our resultant? The resultant is going to be taken from the point here of intersection that we had of the forces to the point of intersection of those lines here. That is where you are going to take your resultant. 
all right? So remember, you are having an accurate diagram. So this is your resultant. So you're going to measure that resultant. Uh, if you measure this one properly, you are going to obtain 12.5 centimeters, okay? So to convert the, this back to, to the Newton, is remember 10 Newton represent one centimeter. So you're going to multiply this by what? By 10. So if you multiply by 10, which means our resultant will be 125 Newton. All right. What about the resultant in terms of the angle uh, here in this case? If we are to take this, this our resultant, we can take either from the east, from the east to the south, or we can take it from the south. If you remember, this is south going to the to the east. So we can take this angle here from this point to this point. All right. So if you measure this angle here, you are going to obtain 44 degrees. So we can write this as south 44 degrees to the what? Uh, to the west, all right? If we take it, sorry guys, this is west. Okay, if we take it from the west to the south, uh, that is you have to measure this angle here, which is going to be, th that is uh, 36, all right? Uh, if you measure properly, this angle is going to be 46 degrees. So it can be, okay, let me indicate properly from this point to this point, all right? So your angle can be west uh, 46 degrees to the, to the south. So it depends with which one uh, do you want to indicate as your final answer. So these two can be our result. So here, I want you to have an accurate diagram, okay? So here I was just showing a sketch, but please do an accurate diagram, okay? On 6.2, the diagram in Fig 5 shows uh, a shop's advertising board supported by two ropes. The board has a weight of 1,500 Newton as indicated. Yes, not 1,500. Here is 1,000. All right. So this was supposed to be 1,500. All right. But now it's given as 1,000. So here we are going to put as 1,000, not 1,500. So this is 1,000. Okay. So if you use 1,500, it's fine. But if you, if you use 1,000, yeah, it's fine again from the diagram, okay? Graphically determine the value of the two unknown forces on, on the ropes, okay? Use triangle of what? Of forces method, okay? So from the triangle of forces, what you're going to check here is that um, we have got a weight component. So a weight component is definitely going down. So I'm going to show you a sketch again, but you're supposed to do this accurately. Sorry, guys, okay? So we are going to choose a scale again of our choice. Uh, let's say we choose one centimeter to represent 100 Newton in this case, okay, 100 Newton. Uh, so from the force that we have of 1000, which is the weight component, okay, this diagram uh, is going to be like this, okay, so you're supposed to have a straight line, okay, so you're supposed to have a straight line. So this line that we are having is representing the weight component of 1000. So from this 1,000, if you divide by 100, it must be 10 centimeters. So this line is going to be 10 centimeters, which is representing what? 1,000 Newton. Okay. So take note that the forces, they are taken at 45 degrees. This one is at 45 degrees. Remember, Z angles. This one is at 45 degrees. Okay. So that means from this point, we are going to measure... 45 degrees from this point. Okay, this is going down. Remember, this is a weight. So you're going to measure 45 degrees inside from this point, okay? You measure 45 degrees, okay? So let's say this is where we have our 45 degrees. From this point also, we measure 45 degrees, okay? So if we are to measure 45 degrees like this, where these two forces intersect, so for the force here going up and the other forces, going this direction. So this is 45 degrees at this point. This is 45 degrees at this point. So what you're going to notice, notice is that when you measure these 45 degrees, these points, they are going to intersect at this point. Where they intersect, you can now measure these two lines in this case, of which these two lines are going to be equal. Why? This is 45, this is 45, so definitely this is an isosceles triangle, okay? 
So if you are if you've grown accurately 10 centimeters, you are going to notice that this line is going to be 7,1 centimeters. This line is going to be 7,1 centimeters. So I want you to do this diagram accurately. These lines they will intersect when you measure these 45 degrees. Okay. So now back to newtons. Remember, we said uh one centimeter represents 100 uh, newtons. So you're going to multiply by 100. Uh, which is going to be 710 newton. You multiply by 100, which is going to be 710 newton. All right, so these are the forces that you're going to have, the two forces uh, from triangle of forces. So please measure properly the angles using your protractor and the angles, uh, I mean, the, the lines using your ruler, you have to measure properly, okay? Uh, so that's what we have in this case. Uh, okay, on 6.3, a single rope pulley, uh, so here we are given that there is a single rope pulley system used to lift bells of, of wool. Yes, three pulleys in the upper block, two pulleys in the lower block, take note, three in the upper and two in the lower. An effort of 615 euro is needed to lift the bell. Uh, wool, uh, wool in this case, where with a mass of 300 uh, kgs. Answer the question below regarding to the pulley system, okay? So the 6.31 is to calculate the, the velocity ratio of the pulley, okay? So how do we calculate the velocity uh, ratio of the pulley in this case? So take note, we, uh, we are given that it has got three pulleys in the upper block and two pulleys in the lower block. So by taking the number of pulleys, because here we do not have that condition of we've got length or diameter. So we can work with the number of pulleys. We have got three in the upper, here we've got three pulleys. In the lower, we've got two. So this can actually give us velocity ratio, which is three plus two, which is five or five S to one. All right, so that is our velocity ratio in this case. Uh, we move on to the other part. How play the mechanical advantage of the pulley? All right, so remember that mechanical advantage is equivalent to uh, the load over the effort, all right? So this is 6.32. Uh, mechanical advantage is equivalent to load over effort. All right, so in this case, we are given an effort of 650 Newton. We do not have the load. So are we going to have the load? Remember that load is force. So you can use the mass to find the force which is going to be uh, mass times gravitational acceleration over the effort, all right? So we put a mass of uh, 300 times the gravitational acceleration, 9,8 over the effort. Our effort is 650. So this is a repetition. If you have to check from the other questions that we did before. Uh, so if we are to divide properly, make sure you multiply properly 300, uh, multiplied to 9,8, then you divide by 650, you are going to obtain something like 4,5, that's 4,5, uh, 2,3,0,7, and so on, which is going to be 2,3, because 0 cannot change 3, so that is your mechanical advantage in this case of the pulley system. All right, then on 6.4, we are now given all right, so that is, let's remove this part. So here we are given on 6.4, Fig 6 shows a simple lever system. The system is in equilibrium. Use the law of moments to calculate the value of the unknown force. Okay, we talked about this, guys, that the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments or anti-clockwise moment is supposed to be equal to the anti sum something like that okay so the sum of the clockwise moments should be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments all right so let's check which moments are moving in the clockwise which one are moving in the anti-clockwise okay so according to the people that we have at this point uh f is moving this direction that is the direction of f which is anti-clockwise. Take note, we are opposing the movement of the clock, which is supposed to be this way. So this is anti-clockwise, okay? So this one, it's anti-clockwise. Uh, 20 Newton here is moving this direction. That is a clockwise. 
Uh, 15 is also maintaining the direction of the clock. So this is clockwise, okay? So on the clockwise, we've got 20 and 15. All right, so take note from our formula, we need the sum of the clockwise moments, which is going to be force times distance. So let's start with uh, 20 here. So 20 back to this point, it's, there's a distance of six meters. So it's 20 times six, all right? So you're going to have 20 times six in this case. So that's 20 times six, all right? We still have another clockwise moment. So we have to add that one, which is 15. So that's 15. Back to this point, we are now having six plus 5,5. So the distance now is 11, 6 plus 5,5, that's 11,5. So it's going to, you are going to multiply 15 to 11,5. So that's plus plus 15 times 11,5, all right. This is equivalent to the anti-clockwise moment now, which is the one that where we've got our F. F is moving in the anti-clockwise, that's F times distance back to this point, which is 3,5. So that's F times 3,5, which is same as 3,5 F, all right. So we can calculate F by uh, combining what we have on the left-hand side, okay, so let's just uh, share the whole screen so that we can have our calculator here. All right, so from our calculator, this is what we are going to have. We just have to combine 20 times six plus uh, 15 times 11,5 like this, all right. So this is going to give us uh, as a decimal 292,5, okay? So we've got 292,5 equal to, 3,5 F. So to find F, just divide by 3,5. Since you are multiplying, divide by 3,5. So F, which is representing the unknown force, is going to be divided by 3,5. This is uh, 83,571. Uh, okay, that is 571. So that is 83,571 Newton. All right, so that is the value for the unknown force that we are uh, given from the diagram. All right, so that was question 6.4. Let's check the other part of the question. All right, where are we having this direction? All right, remember, I uh, get the direction here. All right, so that was question uh, 6.4 with three marks, as we can see here, all right? Question 6.5, when a force is applied uh, to a body, it can have different effects on the body. Name two effects a force can have uh, on a body, okay. So uh, there are so many factors, guys. A force can cause the body to move. It can stop the body. It can change the direction of the body. So, so many ways that you can use. But that's what we had, guys, uh, from this person that is on statics, August 2021 for Mason African Motives. Till we meet again.